Would you like to learn useful vocabulary connected to traveling to work? Welcome to Jen Studio. My name is Jen and today I'm going to teach you 13 expressions connected to commuting in English. You will learn how to talk about your daily commute to work. First, let's take a look at the word commute. Commute is the process of traveling from your house to work and then from work back to your house again. Most people need to commute to work every day. A person who travels from their house to work and from work to their house every day is called a commuter. Most people are commuters. Our second expression for today is rush hour. Rush hour is the two peak times during the day when traffic is the heaviest. Rush hour is when the majority of people are commuting to or from work. My husband leaves for work early so he can try to avoid rush hour. Our third expression is overcrowded trains. Many people need to commute to work by train or by subway. And during rush hour, the trains become overcrowded. This means that there are too many people in that space. It's uncomfortable because it's been packed too full. When I lived in Japan and visited Tokyo during rush hour, the trains were so overcrowded that there were literally station staff with white gloves pushing people onto overcrowded trains. Expression number four is packed buses. Many people might also need to commute to work using public transportation like a bus. But during rush hour, buses are packed. They are completely full of people. There's nowhere to sit because the seats are usually taken and every single available space for people to stand is being taken up with bodies. Expression number five is carpool. Carpooling is a great way to get to and from work more comfortably than being on public transit with many other people. Carpool is when a group of people who live close enough together will travel to and from work together using one car. They will take turns driving. This helps to cut down on the amount of cars on the road and also helps the individuals that are part of the carpool to save on things like gas and the stress of driving every day. Expression number six is traffic jam. And unfortunately, this has nothing to do with actual delicious jam. A traffic jam is when the road is obstructed. There are too many cars so that the cars are moving too slowly or they are completely stopped and unable to move at all. This is usually because, as I mentioned, there's too many cars on the road or because there's some kind of actual obstruction like a traffic accident or construction or bad weather which is holding up traffic. In Canada, we have a joke that we have only two real seasons, winter and construction. We either have snow causing traffic problems or construction causing traffic problems. Expression number seven is stuck in traffic. If you are stuck in traffic, this is what happens to you during a traffic jam. You are in your car, but you're unable to move forward. You are trapped and you can't proceed to work. You need to wait for the cars to move. You're stuck in traffic in a traffic jam. Expression number eight is traffic congestion. This actually has the same meaning as traffic jam. When something is congested, for example, when I was sick earlier, my nose was congested. Air couldn't come in and out. I couldn't breathe through my nose. So it means that everything is stopped. It's stuck. It's unable to move. 
So when traffic has a traffic jam situation, we can also say that there is heavy traffic congestion. The huge snowstorm caused severe congestion this morning during rush hour. Expression number nine is traffic gridlock or just gridlock. Gridlock is another name for a traffic jam because the road is like a grid and it's locked, meaning you are unable to move. The Gardiner Expressway is currently in another gridlock. Expression number 10 is to bring traffic to a standstill. Standstill means there is no movement. So if something happens like an accident, you might hear the sentence, the accident brought traffic to a standstill. Expression number 11 is a bottleneck. This is a bottle and this long part of the bottle here is called the neck of the bottle. So if we're talking about traffic and we say that traffic is bottlenecked, what this means is that the bottom part here of the bottle is wider. So you can picture many cars, they're all moving smoothly towards their destination. But maybe over here, there is some construction or an accident. So suddenly the road becomes narrower. So now the amount of space the cars have to travel on has become more narrow. So not as many cars can go through this part at the same time as compared to when it was moving smoothly over here. So this situation is called a bottleneck. We could say the accident brought traffic to a bottleneck. Expression number 12 is take a detour. A detour is a different temporary route that you might need to travel along in order to avoid something bad that has happened on your main route. Many times when there is construction happening, you will have to take a detour, meaning travel around the construction to get to your destination. Because there are so many problems that can occur while commuting to work, many people prefer expression number 13, which is working from home. These days, and due to the circumstances, more and more people are choosing to work from home. We have two more expressions which are similar to work from home. They are remote working or telecommuting because you're using technology such as like telephone or Skype or something like that to do your work remotely. So remote working, telecommuting both mean you are working from home and not physically traveling to your workplace. So today you have learned 13 expressions to talk about commuting in English. You've learned how to describe traveling to and from work. And now it's time for question of the day. Today's question is how do you commute to work? And do you have any of these problems that we talked about in today's lesson during your commute? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching this lesson. If you found it useful, please subscribe to Jen's Jugio and give this video a thumbs up. Good luck with your English studies. See you in the next lesson.